video i'm going to be using yeo wool and um, you can use any type of yarn that you want for this project and a 4.0 millimeter hook um it doesn't really matter but i prefer this particular hook type a stitch marker you also need a yarn needle a scissors and a measuring tape for this project um to start i'm going to be unraveling my wool <laughs> from the middle so that's how I prefer it, it makes um, the work easier and then I'll join my two balls of yeye wool together to start I usually like to join two together because it gives a very good texture um, for your project so um, for this project I'm going to be making a size large which is 42 inches I'll be making 165 chains the trick to getting the right measurements is to chain and while you're chaining you're counting and then after counting you measure yes that's how you get the measurements that you'll be needing and yeah I'm just going to go ahead and make my chains and then I'll show you what to do next and um, this is my first YouTube tutorial so you guys will forgive me for any errors and uh, yeah <laughs> so please just bear with me now I have my 165 chains and I'm just trying to keep everything aligned uh, yeah at this point, I'm just trying to get my grip on the yarn. Um, you're going to start off by skipping three chains. Skip three chains from your hook. Insert your hook in the fourth chain and make a double crochet. Make another double crochet into the same space. And this is what your work should be looking like. Yes. Now we have three chains, three double crochet in the same space. The first chain three stands as a double crochet. Chain two, skip three chains and make three double crochet into the fourth chain. Chain two and repeat the same thing. Chain two, skip three chain space and make three double crochet into the fourth chain. This is basically what we're going to be doing for row one. So we get to the end of row one. Chain two, skip three chains, make three double crochets into the fourth chain. This is what your work should be looking like. I hope you have the same thing and I hope you understand so far. So we're just going to repeat this pattern until we get to the end of row 1 and I'll show you how to continue. I'm working on my last stitch for row 1. And then we're going to be joining the two ends together because we're going to be working in a circle we're going to be working around and not separately so I'll just quickly show you how I join mine there's no particular pattern to, to it you can just use a yarn needle to join the two ends together or you just slip stitch the way I'm doing in this video there's really no trick to it just join the two ends together
once you join the two ends together make sure the sides are straight and is not tangled together we want both sides to be straight to begin row two we're going to slip stitch into the very top of our first chain three slip stitch into the very top of it and chain one slip stitch into the third stitch skip the middle stitch slip stitch into the third stitch then slip stitch into the chain space chain three and work two more double crochet into the same space we're just going to be repeating what we did in row one three double crochets chain two in the chain two space we're going to be working in the chain spaces now so three double crochets in the chain space chain two and make another three double crochet in the next chain space until we get to the end of row two we're just going to keep repeating the same pattern we did in row one Now I'm finishing off my the last stitch in row 2 and we're going to end row 2 by slip stitching into the first chain 3 that we made earlier. Slip stitch into the very top of the chain and slip stitch all the way to the chain space. Skip the middle stitch, slip stitch into the third stitch and slip stitch into the chain space like we did in row one chain three to start row three make two more double crochets in the same space chain two and repeat if you need to pause the video or play back the video to understand you can do that it's basically repeating the same pattern and this pattern is very easy and simple to follow so we're going to make 25 rows for this and 25 rows for me is 14 inches you can make more or less depending or on how um, big your stitches are but for me I made 25 rows so all you need to do is count and measure to get the exact measurements always count your work and then measure i'm just going to keep working my stitches until i have 25 rows and once i'm done i'm going to show you how to continue i'm completing the last stitch of my row 25 and then i'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to finish off the row this is the first half of our polo um, before we start the chest portion of the, of the of the top we're going to be making an opening in the middle that is where the collar and the buttons are going to be and i'm measuring mine now i have um, 14 inches even though it's not really showing on screen but i have 14 inches you should also measure yours to know if you have more or less and if you have to add more rows you can go ahead and do that to start the second half of this shirt we're going to slip stitch into the chain space like we've previously done at this point we're going to be working back and forth instead of the way we've been working around previously we're doing this to create the opening in the middle of the shirt so we're just going to start row one of the second half like we previously done we're going to start our first row by chaining three and making two double crochet in the same space chain two work your next stitch into the chain space 
and keep doing this until we get to the end of row 1. Well, I had to do a voiceover so my words are a bit faster than my actions, so please bear with me. I'm on the last stitch of row 1 and at this point, we're not going to be slip stitching to finish off the row. We're just going to be making chain 5, which stands for 1 double crochet, chain 2. Turn our work and make three double crochet into the next chain space. As you can see, we're already making the middle part that is open. So this is what you should have now. Continue working this pattern around so we get to the last stitch of row 2. Once we have our last stitch on row 2, I'm going to show you how to continue this second half. Now I'm going to work my last stitch of row 2. making three double crochets as we've been doing chain two this part is a bit different so we're going to chain two and make one double crochet in the very first stitch which is our chain three so at the top of that chain three make one double crochet and that is how we're going to finish off row two To start row 3, we're going to chain 3, turn our work, and make 2 more double crochet in the chain space. This is going to be our first stitch for row 3. This is what you should have now. We're going to chain 2 and make three double crochets in the next chain space so just keep repeating this until we get to the end of row three and i'll show you how to continue Now I'm going to show you how to make the last stitch for row 3. You're going to make 2 double crochet into the chain space, 2 double crochets into the chain space and the third double crochet is going to go into the very top of the stitch. Count 3 chains and make the last double crochet into the third chain at the very top like so and this is what we have so we're just going to repeat row 2 and row 3 as we go along the way repeat row 2 chain 5 and work 3 double crochets into the next space and for row 6 repeat row 3 you can just play back the video to see how it works so you can understand properly. I know it might seem a bit confusing now, but it's really simple when you understand how it works. So you're going to chain 5 to start row 4. That's the same thing we did in row 2. Chain 5, turn your work. Make 3 double crochet in the next chain space. And keep working that part until you get to the end and make one double crochet in the last stitch so you can play back the video to see how it works
this is my last stitch of row four i'm just going to go ahead and finish off with my one double crochet we're going to make six more rows making 10 in total for the second half and once i have 10 rows i'll show you what to do next now i have my 10 rows finished and then we're going to be working on the arm hold for the shirt i'm basically just counting how many rows i have already done which is 10 like i said and i'm just going to measure it to know how many inches i have so the 10 rows is 6 inches and we already did 14 inches earlier which makes a total of 20 inches so the total length of the shirt is going to be 27 inches and we only have 7 inches more to go which is going to be for the armhole where we're going to have the sleeves of the shirt to start the ammo portion of this shirt, we're going to have to count the total numbers of stitches that we have. Mine is 41 stitches in total and I have an odd number. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide it into two. Because I have an odd number, I won't be able to divide them equally. So in front, I'm going to be having 20 stitches. At the back, I'm going to be having 21 stitches. For you, you might have an even number in total, which will make it easier for you to divide. So as you can see that we have an opening in front, meaning that we have to work the front part separately. So I'm just going to start by counting 10 stitches on one side, 10 stitches, and I'm going to be using my stitch marker to mark where to start from and where to stop so I'm counting my 10 stitches now and I'm going to put my stitch marker I'm going to do the same thing on the other side too and put my stitch marker also at the back I'm going to count out my 21 stitches and Put a stitch marker also I didn't have enough stitch marker for this but of course I'm just going to start working from the front as we've always been doing I'm going to start this part by I'm going to start by chaining three on my work and make two more double crochet in the chain space I hope you've understood what I have been saying so far and if not just follow the video as it is you get you definitely get it right I'm just going to keep working my stitches until I get to the stitch marker. So I'm at the part where I marked my stitch marker, and that's row one. To start row two, I'm just going to chain five, turn my work, and three double crochet in the chain space. I'm going to keep working this until I have 8 rows in total and I'll show you what to do next. Now I'm currently on row 8 but I'm not going to finish off the row because we're going to start decreasing and we're going to have our first decrease on row 8 so this is how you're going to decrease you're not going to finish the row like we've been doing previously 
we're going to chain one to start row nine turn our work turn your work and slip stitch into the third stitch skip the middle stitch slip stitch into the third stitch and slip stitch into the chain space for our second decrease on row nine we'll start row nine by chaining three and making two more double crochets in the same space note that we're only decreasing on one side of the shirt and on the sleeve opening we're only decreasing on one side and I keep working my double crochet until the end of the row we're just going to continue working our row 9 and for illustration purposes I'm going to zoom out the video so you can see how our work is turning out speed so this is still row 9 and I'm just showing you what the work looks like and how our work is going to be decreasing on one side of our pole. So I'm just going to keep working until the end of row 9 so you can see how I finish off the row. So I'm finally on the last stitch of row 9, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish off the row. This is just to show you that there is no decrease on the other side. So start row 10, just chain 5, turn your work and work your way to the end of row 10 we're going to be making our decrease in total we're going to be having 12 rows in total for the sleeve portion of the shirt that is our armhole area is going to be 12 rows in total Now I'm at the end of row 10 and I'm showing you how we're going to work in our decrease. So yes, this is what we have. So make two more rows of decrease and I'll show you how to continue. This is my last row for this side. I'm just going to go ahead and finish off, then cut off my yarn. So 
so this is what my work looks like now as you can see we have the arm hole opening and then our decrease side for the neck portion so i'm just going to go ahead and take a measurement to show you how many inches i have as you can see i have seven inches total like i said before we made 12 rows for the arm opening we're just going to go ahead and repeat what we did on the right side now i'm going to show you how i attach my yarn count three chains and attach your yarn on the third chain this is how i prefer to attach my yarn you can attach your yarn any way you feel comfortable i inserted my hook in the third chain and made three chains going into the chain space and making two more double crochets um, at this point we're just going to continue the way we have been doing chain two make three double crochets in the chain space basically we're going to repeat what we've just done earlier So we're just going to repeat what we did earlier and once we finished off the second side I'm going to show you how to start the back portion. So I was recording all day and then it got really dark outside and my lights became a bit dimmer. So excuse the lightning i have now and um, i'm going to, to attach my yarn uh, in the chain space at the back i believe you also put your stitch marker so just attach your yarn where you have the stitch marker at the back we're going to start as usual Start by chaining three and make two double crochets in the same space. Chain two and then repeat the pattern. So we're going to keep working this until we get to the end of row one for the back portion of the shirt. I'm at the end of row one where I have my stitch marker so I'm just going to finish off by making three double crochets in the last stitch where we have our stitch marker three double crochet so we're going to chain five chain five and walk three double crochets in the next chain space so we're basically just going to um, repeat this pattern until we have the same number of rows as the front portion so in the front we did a total of 12 rows we're going to do the same at the back because we want both sides to be equal so just continue working your pattern until you have 12 rows 